<laughs> Don't you right call me Ricky PP. Screaming. <laughs> Don't you dare call me Ricky PP. <laughs> How dare right you? Now, uh, hey gamers, welcome to uh, Dungeon Discourse. It's Thursday. It's the, this this show is is where we talk about our D and D show. Smile. Uh, today we have Laura and Duke to uh, chat about last session, talk about some some things that happened, uh, answer some questions that either chats has or got submitted to us through our Discord. We got quite a few questions to to go through today. Yeah, so, we got um, a lot. <laughs> you know, pog you for submitting them. Appreciate that, guys. I mean, it makes sense. You know, it was a pretty, pretty yeah. chill episode. Yeah. Nothing happened. You know, there's not that's, a lot. To yeah, talk that's about. one of the more laid back ones, <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> um, but yeah, be, uh, before we get going, anyone have anything they want to announce before we uh, get the show rolling? Uh, just thanks to everybody who came out for our birthday streams. Because I, I don't know about, I'm not going to speak for Duke, but I had a great time during my birthday stream on my birthday and. I'm gonna assume Duke did too, but I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, understated, but. And uh, next month, we keep an eye out on the level select Discord if you're in it, and level select Twitter because we are in the planning phase for the next charity select yeah. campaign. Yeah. Other than that, I don't think so. All right, Duke. No more now. I think. I got older. That's about it, really. <laughs> My man. We aged. I might have a job soon. Something. Woo! Dude! Yeah, that's fucking exciting, bro. Dude. Yeah. You, you've you nagged and nagged and nagged at this guy. And he kept putting you off. And then now it was like, oh, yeah, you know what? Persistence. But you did it. Well, you know, you don't have a job yet. But, like, you know, you got your foot in the no. door, so to say. Right? Yeah. Really That's fucking a, cool place. Too. Highly likely. Imagine but, being employed. You know, I, I, I went. In, I went into all the details uh, on my stream yesterday. So, you know, mm -hmm. feel free to check out the VOD. Do you want to know uh, any more? <laughs> there we go. Um, do I have any announcements? Uh, beep boop. Beep boop boop. You pregnant? Fucking <laughs> weird. You are glowing today, King. <laughs> you um <laughs> can't ask lady if she's pregnant dude that's fucked up all right man your cave big excuse me your cave big you're you not, not just uga you whole shakalaka <laughs> <laughs> uh that's stupid memes uh, that's what's happening um i think uh saturday i'm doing a little little special stream i'm gonna be doing a an elden ring co-op randomizer uh run starts saturday it's gonna be fun if you guys want to you're not joining for Vampire Movie Night? How dare you? Fuck that. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you know, if you want to see me miserable, tune in on uh, on my channel on Saturday. That's pretty, really all I can say. Uh, because, no, my luck, we're going to get fucking Melania as our first boss in the story area. It's going to be a great time. Um, other than that, welcome, everybody. Um, last we left off, uh, you know, previously on Dungeon Select, we um, the party... Made it out of Nessus, made it out of the uh, ninth hell, and got transported to Cleric's Refuge. They had a couple of choices, and the party decided that the most likely place for there to be a cleric powerful enough to attempt to resurrect Daigon would be at Cleric's Refuge, a place in Sigalia where Marcus uh, got his teachings and and uh, and got taught how to be a cleric. As well as many other clerics that that travel throughout the empire, uh, it's very. If you find a cleric on the roads throughout the empire, it's very likely that they got taught at Cleric Refuge in Sigalia. It's uh, it's it's you know it's like it's like, it's a cleric university, I guess in a way, sort of. Um, so when you got there, you were assisted by a man named Father Alt. He uh, performed a ritual together with a handful of your uh, party members who attempt to bring Daigon back, and back she came with a twist. Uh, mm -hmm. It turns out that uh, Daigon no longer is a tabaxi uh, monk. She is now a lingering soul. Um, so that she is comes... a tabaxi. It's just a tabaxi I, soul. Yeah, a tabaxi I guess. Soul. A, tabaxi <laughs> linger, a lingering tabaxi soul. Mm. Um, 
which comes with a, a, a new set of cool abilities, but also with a new set of challenges and uh, having to relearn the ropes, so to say. Um, but for now, at least Dagon is back to some capacity. Uh, she's herself, you know, so like... In a way, Dagon is back, but in a way, she also isn't. It's a, it's a very weird um, experience, but... Mentally, I'm back. Yeah. Physically, debatable. Well, Physically, you can be in any body, <laughs> really. You say mentally you're back, but you didn't retain whatever weird insanity you had. So mentally, you kind of a little, a little changed up. Because Dutch and I talked about it, and basically the way we both kind of saw it, the... The curse was like a physical manifestation on her brain. And since I'm not physically attached to like the the actual like tissue that is my brain, just now sitting in my yeah. frozen in time body, the madness was like affecting me in a physical way. Like there was yeah. like a tangible thing connected to my brain. Whereas now that I'm a soul and I'm not, I don't have physical restraints in that way. It yeah. didn't, it didn't come with me. Cause I did ask, <laughs> I was like, if I come back this way, is that still a thing? <laughs> Yeah, exactly. So, um, and the party kind of decided, okay, fuck, we just went literally through hell and back. Uh, what's next? And I don't remember exactly. But are you guys headed to the forest next? Is that like the next on the to-do list? Yeah. You you handed in the tooth so. um, to uh, the tusk. He just kind of showed up. Yeah, he, show, he just kind of showed up. Yeah. Took took the tooth from you and fucked off again. So now that you don't have that to worry about. Uh, yeah, anyway, Whispering can, Woods is where I wrote we're going yeah, next. You can fetch so. your payment uh, from uh, that group of people whenever you're next in Eldilon. In the meantime, I yeah, the Whispering Woods is about a day's a day's travel away, and uh, that's gonna that's gonna be fun. Go into the woods to try and find um, this this helm of Aros, one of the artifacts of the Sundering. Um, you know, artifacts that were the you know. We've, we've heard and seen them in the last campaign as well. Uh, we're, we're familiar with what those are. Um, but yeah. First things first. How have you guys experienced the last session, but also just like the last few? There's like the last couple of, uh, you know, few weeks of, of, of Dungeon Select. Fucking exhausting, dude. Holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> I leave for one week. I come back. We're in hell. Yeah, we have and a session that's like entirely combat. <laughs> we fight fucking a general devil hell. general, and we fight a fucking lich. It's just it was Who, who's from campaign one, like the combat. Yeah. yeah, it was exhausting. But you're good now. You're back. So that, died. What the fuck? That first session was exhausting, and then the interim for me have felt like a vacation because I was playing like not a throwaway character, but a character that was kind of just like for me as a player, a mini vacation from the series, because it's like that character is not invested in like yeah. dying and being dead. They don't have the baggage coming in with the group. <laughs> They're just here to hang out, help protect, and maybe fuck with Soko, because maybe they were tied to his backstory, but we're not we get too far into that also i rolled like absolute shit for like four consecutive weeks or so Same. And that Same. really is like demoralizing i know that's it dumb no, no, jesus that's, christ it sucks. sucks i think you i think might be slowly... dice, but so fucking nice i might be coming out of it because i had my witchlight campaign last night and i was rolling double digits half of my rolls and single digits i was like okay this is more better this is more accurate this you know? is more like, better good and bad no. Yeah, words. Words are hard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So hopefully, knock on wood, I'm I'm coming out of this this joint curse Duke and I had because I, I was using the dice Hope also so last man. night that you got me Duke. So they were rolling okay on average. Because every so. time, like every time I see Duke roll and I can just see the pain in his fucking eyes, dude. As he looks, <laughs> he doesn't even look at the camera, but he's just looking at his dice and he just like I'm just like, like... this like this like blank stare. And I'm like, oh god, here we go thousand yard stare yeah because it's like like how many like Dagon would be alive if i hadn't rolled like shit i guarantee it like uh, we don't know that because i was rolling I, the worst i've ever rolled in my entire right. life but if one of us was rolling good like i was yeah. really trying to do damage and i had the potential to do a decent amount of damage three turns in a row or something that i just straight yeah. up fucking missed like mm. Mm, sorry yeah 
Ugh. Yeah, but like sometimes, you know, it's just the way the way the way the game goes. That right? is the way the cookie crumbles. Mm. Sometimes <laughs> dice go low number, but you wish it wasn't every time. Yeah. You know. <laughs> Yeah, no, it I, just yeah. means you're owed yeah. a session where you're gonna be like the MVP and da and Davian's gonna do some dope ass shit and it's gonna be great and you're gonna be like yes and just feel back yeah. on top. Yeah. Pay off. <laughs> um. Yeah. Like I can attack twice now, which means I can do like quite a lot of damage, man. Especially when it's like, oh, okay, Hunter's Mark is an extra D6. I'm doing a D8. It's like a D8 plus five or some shit with my longbow. I can attack twice. Like the. Like average and damage I should be pulling out is like you know sort of twelve or something a ton. Like and we can up it even more because true. if I choose to possess you and team up with you during combat going forward, I get to add to my attack. damage. No, even on your own attacks, I can. You don't just even have to possess them. My for that. damage so any, to your any stuff. creature within thirty feet. Of true, you I can just do that in general. I can just but add. So can I can make your attacks more powerful. As an action, imbue your weapon with smite, so you deal an extra two d eight. Yeah. I have like a paladin as divine yeah. smite that I can give people. Is that again if I land a successful attack? That is, yeah. Yes. Your next attack. And then, your next attack. Well, if, and if you that throw in before the end of, before the end of Laura's next. My turn. turn. If you throw in the other like D8 fire damage, that could be doing potentially, you know, like. Yeah, because I can add two D8 radiant damage to anyone's attacks. But man, it. it's been rough. <laughs> yeah, I I've, mean, you know, and I've been you, the worst of it is like I've been counting off the arrows as well. Mm -hmm. And like, I think when we got into the hells, I've got I had fifty arrows, and I'm I'm pretty sure I'm below forty now, because you missed so you've much. You've also just you're, just, just been, misses, yeah. yeah. I, I didn't I didn't retrieve any of the misses. Hey, the glow up is coming, dude. <laughs> the glow up is coming. The glow up. All right. And then I'm, I I always have that dilemma of like, if I attack with Eldritch Blast, well now there's really no reason for me to use Eldritch Blast because. Eldritch Blast is just a flat D10 for me. I don't add my Charisma modifier or anything. Mm -hmm. And the only benefit used to be, oh, I'd attack twice, but now I can attack twice on my bow. So, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Um, like, yeah, last few sessions, like, that entire, like, arc was completely unplanned, obviously. Like, I... <sighs> we made it through, though. It was, uh, it was rough on my end as well, because I was like, oh, fuck. Because I had to kind of tread that line of like, fuck, they just lost somebody, but I also don't want to make it seem easy for them to just, oh, I'm going to go easy on them and give them a way out right away. Because you are in like the deepest depths of the hells, you know what I mean? Yeah. But I still wanted the, the, the escape to be a challenge, regardless of like, you know, yeah, yeah, you lost someone. Yeah, that sucks. But like, there's a time to mourn later. Sorry, guys. Smile. You know what I mean? Yeah, uh, but and, uh, you know, we did. We pretty much did the best that we possibly could have to keep Daigon like in one piece and mm -hmm. preserved or whatever for the resurrection. Yeah, did Soko roll like a nat one? Like what happened? I'll reveal. You know? Okay, I'll reveal the rolls. So the, no, the way it works, resurrection rituals come with four checks. Three of those checks are made by players of the group, and one check yeah. is made by the cleric performing. Uh, so if it were Oh. Say if it were Koiba performing the, the ritual, oh, they're all he, fucked he it would up. have to roll tw uh, twice. One roll of those four is allowed to fail for the resurrection to still pass. Right. Uh, for the ritual to still succeed. If two or more checks fail, no resurrection. But because uh, Laura and I had talked about it, and you kind of planted that idea last time we were, all three of us were on yeah. Discourse, like, oh, Lingering Soul is a yeah. thing. Laura was like, no, oh, I was you know what, chat. dude? You were in chat, yeah. Uh, and Laura was like, oh, that sounds pretty cool, actually. So I was like, okay, well, how about if the resurrection succeeds, I roll a d20, and we'll just determine an odds, and whatever the d20 lands on decides whether you come back as Diagon or as a Lingering Soul. And Laura said, right. uh, leaning a little more towards Lingering Soul, but not overly, yeah. so let's make it like a 60-40 split. Like DC 12. Yeah, so yeah. we had DC 12, Lingering yeah. Soul, and above 12 was come back as normal. Yeah, and I rolled a 10. So and Laura's fault. Yeah. yeah, so like, well, no, uh, no, no, okay, for, 50 50, Dutch still rolled a 10. So even if it had been 50 yeah, 50, even had been 50, 50, I still would have been a lingering still, soul. Technically, still been, uh, yeah. Yeah. But uh, you've passed three out of the four checks. Soko was the only one that rolled very low. So right, the resurrection right. succeeded, but it was just like, because Laura was open for the option to come back as a lingering soul, I just had to roll the 20 myself and decide which one it was going to be. 
You know what's really mm -hmm. funny though? That Soko mm -hmm. rolled the lowest, but of the messages like the that the three said that I heard in the afterlife, his probably like Jax's probably would have had the strongest effect <laughs> on Daigon. So that's ironic. <laughs> uh, I gave to be fair to him, I gave him like a an extra plus five because when we had that death and I basically asked Daigon like, yo, which of these three arguments Which of these made a difference? Made a difference and you were like Jax. So I gave Soko an extra plus five, but he would he still fail. It's a DC. Oh, Soko! Come on. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> he rolled an he rolled an eight, man. Like, <sighs> work with me here. <laughs> I set the I set the DC to fifteen. Yeah, that makes sense. So, do I mean, I completely up to you to reveal it or not, Laura. But are, are your intentions as the lingering soul ever to come back fully, or is it your business is done, new character? I forward? want to let I'm. That's very much how the story goes and how I feel about it. Because she's also realizing, like, even in that moment when... Because she didn't realize she also came back as a ghost right away. She learned that with the part, like, Laura knew. But Diagon didn't yeah, realize. Because yeah. the first day she thought she was normal. Um, And then when she left her body and seeing it, there was, like, a whole lot of emotions in a very short amount of time. And... Even the wording, I was trying not to think about it too much, but even then when it came up, because I think the words I used were that body has never been kind to me, or like it's never done me any favors Did you or to something. Song, isn't you? Yes. Um and so it was like the immediate reaction was I'm free, fuck this, I hate this, like great, I can be like whatever, whoever, not fully, because I'm possessing it, but like I'm free of that thing now. But then also the whole like, oh well, do you want to just like let it go and then when we're discussing how are we going to keep your body with us so we can use it for that and then i also was surprised to find she, like she she and laura was surprised she didn't want to let go of it at the same time because it's that again like it's been the source of a lot of her perceived problems but then like the unknown is scarier right and and knowing well i don't know what i don't know it's like i, I didn't enjoy being that but i also don't know how to be anything else kind of thing and so I feel like it's gonna just see what happens. Like, also how long, like before the opportunity pre presents itself, before she would decide to. It's like, is the goal to eventually come back as she was, or is the goal to enjoy this extra time she's been given and then move on when it's appropriate, and then a new character comes in? Because I was talking to Dutch, and I think right now, unless something changes i think to the mindset that it's like i'm here for this extra time i've been given to protect my friends and get to experience life actually having a family now and then once i've done that i can move on and once i know that these ragtag fuckwits can look after themselves kind of thing but who knows there might be if the opportunity comes i'm not going to completely discount it because she might because i also really long term as a player wanted the whole die allegory and metaphor for me right who's struggling with that as a real person had a seizure oh oh stream dropped some frames too but i think we're back now okay <laughs> yeah because i saw a stream is frozen but i think yeah, we're good, yeah, good. <laughs> but I, I just like my internet just like died for like five seconds uh, happens we stopped happens. You, the last thing i heard was uh uh you were basically just saying like i'm not going to discount the fact that maybe something changes blah, 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 uh, here for oh my god it's gone again stop stop <laughs> stop it <laughs> stop terrible timing <laughs> are you good <laughs> i think we're good okay i think we're good not going good all right Basically, um, yeah. Last thing we TLDR heard was, was uh, you uh, uh, not discounting anything. Not discounting about anything. Will yeah, she yeah. come back or not? Because yeah. as a player, I would like for it for her to come back, pro like fully, fully in some ways. Because the whole of arc I wanted that character to go on was an arc of like self acceptance and learning to like love the skin you're in, kind of thing. Because that's something that Laura, as a human being, is struggling with, right? And so it'd be nice if I could. Maybe if I get her to go on that journey, it would coincide with me as a person going on that journey, and that'd be great. But I'm not going to force that upon the story if it never happens. So we'll see. Who knows? <laughs> Keeping all the options open. Exactly. Uh, plus, we also... did, Dutch and I did discuss an endpoint, though, that if, if two certain things are achieved, 
and she is still a soul, she will choose to move on and be yeah, like, yeah. I'm glad for the extra time. I think you guys got yeah. this. Bye and peace out into the afterlife. And there are like, there are options, right? It's like we, we made, I'll, I'll talk about it now since we're kind of on the topic. Um, we, me and Laura went through the documentation of the lingering soul up until the level that she is now, just to kind of have like, okay, okay. And the only thing we really had to change were like some things regarding, uh, uh, regarding the class is one thing we changed is that normally if she possesses dead creatures, course, right? you can yeah. only possess I only have a minute. minute. But I added the like caveats that is like if some kind of magical effect is stopping the decaying process off of the corpse that circumvents this effect. So a gentle repose, for instance, makes it so yeah. that lingering soul can inhabit that body for as long as the gentle repose is in effect. Because my logic there is it stops the decay of the body, therefore the body doesn't age, therefore you, there's no time limit. So as long as yeah, that time is not up, passing. Yeah, time is not passing body. for that body technically. That's kind of the only like it's a bit of stretch, but like that way, it makes it a little more playable instead of having to fucking body. I mean, it, it is it is strange, honestly, that there is a time limit imposed on being able to possess corpses. I guess. Yeah. Well, it also makes sense with other corpses because also it's like this was my body. It's obviously if, if you're gonna be familiar with or know the intimate yeah. workings of any physical body, it would be the one you you lived in right yeah, so there's also the crap, combination yeah. of the strength of connection with the fact that it's in gentle repose so like stasis the body's in stasis time has frozen for her body until the spell wears off so i can possess it indefinitely because like when i but jump into it time isn't passing one thing so. i will say though is that like daigon's body is there for like out of combat purposes because daigon's body yeah has one hit point yeah, I a cannot. Corpse that you possess has one hit point. So when combat arises, well, like, Daigon has to fucking like body hop, find an NPC to find an enemy to possess, or oh, Brooks killed someone, I'm gonna just body hop in that and use that corpse as a shield for the next combat and then hop back in Isn't Daigon it odd thing. though? That okay. You can possess a living thing mm -hmm. indefinitely unless it's dispelled, right? Like, not there's you don't get to roll extra checks to to get the ghost out, right? Um, they do if I try either... and possess them stealthily. They get to roll when, against No, it. when you initially possess a creature, they have to succeed on a throw. Mm -hmm. But after that point, there's no, like, repeating the save. Either they have to be knocked unconscious, or you are forced out by uh, dispel well, document later good, on, or the turn undead. The document later on right? makes it so At that... At fifth level, right, checks so come that in. If you force someone that you possess to do something, after they're forced to do that, they can try and... Push you they off. roll an insight check to be like, so, why did I just so do you that? Can, and then so they you can... can sit inside them unknowingly. Yeah. Yeah. And they will never have to succeed on the check. Yeah, but until then it, you try yeah. and make them do something. But then again, like, okay, so because I'm Dagen not hops in someone's anything, body. How would they like, know? say Dagon possesses a fucking yeah. town guard. That town guard will just do his daily duties because he's still in control. You know what I mean? Dagon is just there. I'm to not hitchhike. doing anything. But despite that being indefinite, when you possess a corpse, it only lasts a minute. Yeah, you know, because I think yeah. in my head it's caveat. tied to the the life force of these people. It's not about the physical shell, and that's why there's only a minute yeah, because maybe. there is no life force in that body anymore. It can only really be animated yeah. for so long. So the trick, the trick for for Laura, I guess, is when combat arises, she's gonna have to make sure to fucking body hop out of Daigon's corpse, and because that thing cannot get take damage or else and it's just gone. Her corpse somewhere <laughs> safe. Uh, yeah. The, the, the other thing that I was gonna any say. Damage, yeah, is that yeah, it's, I can't very possess specific it ever again. To, it's very specific to um, if the creature you're possessing drops to zero hit points, then you're forced out. Yeah. You also take damage that the body takes. So if you're in something that's dead, then yeah. the whole hit points conversation becomes a little bit confusing because yeah. it doesn't have hit points to lose. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. Ethan brings sense. up a good way to explain it. it. Think about it as I'm when I'm in a, a corpse, I'm also using my whole energy to sustain their animation, their every single micro movement. Whereas when I'm a passenger, that's passive. Yeah, I'm just like in their body. Yeah. They are moving around. They are controlling their breathing, their muscles, their heart rate, their whatever. When I have to animate a whole dead body myself, that yeah, I takes guess so. Energy, yeah, that's a good way to explain it's only it too. A minute. But yeah, it's going to yeah. be very fun to kind of see that balance of like, because, you know, if need, like, there's always NPCs that Daigon, like, in a fight, Daigon has a choice of like, oh, do I want to try and possess the guy that's alive? Or do Although, I just wait for I them mean, to cut with... someone down and fucking, <laughs> or well, do I possess one of my option. friends? With know? what Unseen option. Passenger stipulates. Yeah. When they make the charisma save, they know you're possessing them. Yeah, yeah. and then I get bounced out. No, no, no. No. If, so, 
before the fifth level, right? Oh, so yeah, unseen, yeah, yeah. unseen passengers specifically, like, you make a stealth, they make a perception, and if they mm -hmm. fail, you possess them unknowingly. So yeah. before that, if you don't try and do it stealthily, they are fully aware yeah, that they you possess aware. them when they make the And you don't get save. bumped out until they find a way to bump you out with either a... Which, yeah. is, which is so weird, right? Ghost spell, <laughs> good and evil, or, or so, Eternal So yeah, Town God yeah. going about his duties, but he knows there's a ghost in him and there's yeah, nothing yeah. he can do about it. Like, I mean, he can go to a priest and get an exorcism, like right? Like, he can go to a yeah, priest and be like, Father! Right. Ah! Father! You know I mean? Father! <laughs> I mean, possessed, and at that point, if Di at that point, Diagon is just kind of fucked, right? Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Channel Divinity turn undead. And yeah, exactly, yeah. right? In so. trouble. Well, also, he wouldn't know. All he'd have to do is leave, get far enough away from Kess. Plus, Kess has to be within 150 feet of her at so all times. So if they move yeah. 150 feet away, True. I leave their body True. no matter what. Okay, so another question. Yeah? If Diagon possesses a corpse... Mm -hmm. Can the corpse get temporary HP? It, we, clearly, we won't be able to heal it, but the corpse is considered to have one health. What if we I try and get so. temporary HP? I um, think I would get temporary HP as the entity inside yeah. it. Um, let me look up the exact rules regarding temp HP to begin with. Yeah. While you look right. it up, because also Ethan mentioned like the combo of if you take half damage, makes fairly strong if I hide in Brooks. Because the other option in combat, it's either like find... A living enemy to possess and try and just make them not be good at attacking us, or I like possess a dead thing and fight with it. The other option is if we work out between Brooks and Davian as the two physical weapon fighters in the party that are left, if we work out a deal where it's like there is consent under certain conditions and I ride along with them because I also have abilities that when I'm inside a host, I can heal you, I can shield you, I can do like other shit and I can power up your weapons, I can get, make you attack. Oh, is this, so, is this based on your subclass? Yeah, my subclass. Because my subclass is a support class. I chose the third one, the... Spirit Guardian. Guardian. Spirit Guardian. I think it's Pulling the Spirit Guardian. Okay, okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so I can... So rules as written... I can make myself um, a shield and do all sorts of stuff. A corpse is technically an object, and you cannot give objects temp HP. Okay. Technically. All right. Yeah. There you go. Uh, it's gonna be fun to see, kind of like in theory, it sounds challenging, but like not impossible. You know what I mean? And it sounds, it's, I, I feel like we just kind of have to see how it goes for a few combats and see how like how how things go. Uh, but I think it's, I think it's, uh, it's fun, yeah. interesting, definitely. The other thing uh, we we did need to realize we need to change slash retcon that this is not the class said it and we're changing it. It's the class doesn't say it, and I assumed, and we did it. when I possessed Brooks in the last episode just to test it. Uh, I played it, and like we played it where I could hear his thoughts. That is not true. They can no, telepathically can communicate, communicate yeah. so he yeah. can like intentionally think a thing, and I can hear it. But I can't just hear everything else going on. So when I'm <laughs> possessing someone, I can't just like read their mind. So that that was a I assumed that I could for some reason, and that is the not only problem true. is that we can't go. Yeah, but like even like if Daigon goes unconscious, she still makes death saves and shit. So like yeah, uh, and the, only I, is, the only thing again, is the only thing is um. Dagon can't be healed by potions, but can still be healed by yep. spells. So yeah, anything I cannot take the benefit of anything that, that is ingested. In ingestion, so a healing yeah. potion is a no because I can't drink things. So, I cannot eat or drink. <laughs> no, but, but like okay, the invoke smite is iffy because <clears throat> non-magical weapon. So your bow would not really help. For it, no, it lasts until the uh, it lasts until Dagon's next turn. And if you hit, it will deal an additional 1d8. So you would use it as an action. You'd use Invoke Smite as an action. But then if I missed in that turn, it's wasted. Yeah. 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 But um, I don't have a limited use of Invoke Smite. No, so it's okay. That's, that's, yeah, that's pretty dope. I have um, a limited use for some of my other shit, but not that one. Uh, quickly, yeah, to answer a question or object, in chat. It, it can uh, be on how do I touch your ghosts? Before. Get us healing touch work? Yes, because Diagon in her ghost form can still be damaged Invisible. by physical weapons. She just has resistance to the uh, yeah, damage if it's not magical. Is... So she can oh, still be real. she can still be stabbed as a ghost. Yep. Therefore she can yeah. also still be healing touched as a ghost. Simple as that. Yeah. The way I see it, it's like even though I'm not a physical <clears throat> soul, it's like your 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 soul and your memory like you still have memory of how things hurt you. So it's almost like I'm I feel it becomes almost like it's almost like psychic slash force damage, even though it's not. How uh, visible is she as a ghost? I'm still remembering that this hurts, even though she's it's not very visible a as a ghost. Body. Because the way it works is, I her glow ghost, for, she I glows like, like dim light. light for five feet. She's very visible as a ghost, especially in the dark, and yeah, her I, spirits will just look like Daigon, but just Digan. like semi-translucent, pretty much. Yeah, the, um, I only at level ten do I get the ability to become invisible. 
I'm very visible. <laughs> I feel like the Spirit Guardian subclass is very like on brand for Dagon. Given yeah, like, yeah, the given other her two sort subclasses. of personality and protectiveness and. The other two just felt a lot more like based in emotions she never really strongly projected. Like they're based in anger, based in revenge, things that she yeah. definitely wasn't feeling around the time she died. Yeah, and plus, like, so even it didn't if, make sense. If we're, like, it's like the cunt who killed you is dead. You know what I mean? So, like, what's that yeah. to avenge? You know what I mean? <laughs> that it also is kind of a kind of a womp womp, I suppose. Like, you can't really. Literally, literally the death. only thing I want like a ven vengeance on it wouldn't be for this death. I would be like, I want vengeance for my first death which would be like for the hanging and be like i want to go back mm. and just fuck with the town i'm from as a ghost i'm becomes... gonna haunt i'm gonna haunt all their asses this is i'm Dagen gonna make my parents shift the day. from uh, neutral to evil guys um <laughs> well literally the whole guide she literally shifts writes... to evil she starts doing fucking necrotic damage well, true yeah, yeah. It's like, <laughs> damn it like the whole subclass is very much written like it seemed very clear like there's a high likelihood that you in this form because you're more volatile the negative emotions are enhanced like it almost seemed like push not pushing towards but like this is a very valid consideration if you yeah, want to no, come back. They, evil, they go the fucking. They go the Bioware approach, right? You can either be a fucking Paragon or a Renegade. You can choose whichever yeah. direction you want to go with it, kind of thing. They give you options for both. So yeah. you you rerolled all your stats. You got a pretty decent array. I did, no, and... I, I, no, that was wrong. It, we reread oh. it. I do not. I kept Daigon's stats. No. I do not. Uh, what I her... lose was my ability score improvements. So I had to go yeah. back to and, my and basic her like stats. proficiencies changed. Um, yeah. yeah. But, like, the stats she had uh, is what she has now as well. Um, yeah, so all I've done is I redid the one ability score improvement I, I had gotten before I put it into mm -hmm. one dex, one constitution, because I bumped both those up. And now, because of my subclass, I undid that and put a plus two to wisdom, because wisdom right. is my aspect now yes. as a okay. soul. Yeah, because I was like, what on earth is an aspect modifier? Yeah, you just pick like, one oh, of your six your stats. Your aspect modifier is determined by yeah. your subclass. Yeah. 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 And like one, yeah, and then that that stat becomes your end. Your, you know, it's basically your spellcasting modifier, your spellcasting yeah. score kind of thing. It's cool because when when I looked at this before, like when you and I looked at the Dutch, it was like we only really went sort of skin deep, but seeing the subclasses and stuff is super cool. Yeah, like, it's very cool. It's very cool. Definitely. Uh, before I read too far into it, definitely I was a challenging of going... one. Yeah, mm. I was thinking of going Poltergeist at first just because I hadn't read very far and I saw it was like the dexterity based one that fit. And obviously before that was my best skill. But then mm. also the fact that you're slit, you're, you go back to basics and you get to redo your ability score. I was like, okay, I yeah. don't have to pick that just because my stats work with it. Yeah, and we also wise, talked, though. this whole class is less about, you know, min maxing and being useful and this whole, this whole decision was purely for RP and it's storytelling. It is yeah. not about yeah. combat or anything for me. So if yeah, I'm, it's if I'm not cool, very though. useful, it's fine. Like, I feel like, especially for Daigon, this whole, I, I can very much imagine. And that's also partially the reason why I considered it for Daigon was like, Daigon has let, went, th has gone through her life. Never really feeling like anybody cared for her about Lance. And now she finally finds that family and it gets cut short. I feel like that's a really good motivation to kind of be like, eh. maybe that is an anchor enough for Daigon's soul to be like, no, I don't want to die. No. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, and kind of live that, that like life having friends and a family that actually cares about her until she's like satisfied and then decides like, okay, I'm good now. And you're starting so, at sixth level, right? Yeah. Yeah, I'm six because I I lose a level compared to the rest of you. Yeah, that's so also like, instead there of giving her five, for dying. Yeah. Instead of giving her five, because technically y'all leveled up after the fight, I was just like, no, we we level up as a party always. So dying would have been seven. You know what I mean? So yeah, so I'm a six lingering soul as opposed to so if if down the line we d I do get put back in my body and come back as normal, I would be the same level as the rest of you, and I would add the levels. Basically, I I reappear as my level seven self, and then I add any levels I gained while I was a lingering soul. Yeah. Uh, very cool class, and I'm very excited to kind of see it. Like in theory, it sounds very cool and and all that stuff, but I'm very excited to see it like actually in 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 sessions and definitely I'm definitely curious to see how how like the combat side of things is gonna go. That's gonna be interesting. That's uh, for like yep. especially the first time. But the RP, dude, the fucking I think the role play and just like the character development and 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 group character building, I think it's gonna go through a lot with this uh, change. This is like the first like real death. Uh, real, real death, I guess. Uh, that yeah. didn't get solved by Revivify. Uh, that the party. Yeah. I'm still real through. mad that it was me and not Soko, though, just for the streak. <laughs> was um, was binding to Kess's vessel? Was that your decision? 
That's one of the questions uh, we have for Discord. Oh. We'll oh. just do it now if you want. Uh, okay. up. Because someone, oh, Ke um, Bell asked, what would the other choice, like, what would it have been if it wasn't? Oh, yeah, fuck Kess it, yeah, as well. might as well. Like, what yeah, was backup and choice? And, and literally, on to the rest of the I can show you, I can show you later my You can pick a creature to be bound to, right? I, yep. I could, and I thought about yeah. it. Because originally, because also we were like reading this on the fly, on the break, like we were trying to, because we didn't want to do too much like research and get too invested in this and then mm. it not and then happen. It didn't happen, yeah, exactly. So we're reading during, it's also part of why the great cliffhanger of we're going to go to break before you yeah, know what the ritual is, like, but also because oh, you're like, we need to figure God, it out. shit, fucking shit. <laughs> So, so me and Laura are like frantically DM'd each other for like 15 minutes during yeah. that break. Like, <laughs> yeah, we're just like madly <laughs> typing. And at first I thought, at first I thought, because I didn't even realize that I'm only barely high enough level to possess a body. I thought I would have had to appear in a person. So my initial message to Dutch was, um, Kess, Kess's eyes would have glowed. Kess would have kind of like been visibly possessed and spoken as me and said a few lines that was basically like, I heard you, I'm coming back, don't wait for me, but like, I'll find you again. And then I would have left Kess and found a new body and Dutch and I would have come up with a character that I'd be possessing. It's like but the new me. But then we're like, wait, 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 I can affect, I can, I can possess a body. I can possess this body. And then we're like, oh, yeah. think of the fun we'll have of not knowing right away that I'm a ghost. And they'll think yeah, maybe like, the ritual think, worked. Like, oh, I'm good. And, and then suddenly like, oh, food doesn't really taste that good, guys. Oh, I didn't yeah. even sleep last night. Mm. Yeah, so the original plan was possess Kess, but only temporarily, because Daigon doesn't like the idea of also, just without consent, just being, hi, I'm in your body now, you know? So it was possess Kess to tell you that something had happened, and then Dutch and I would come up with a way that a seemingly new character would reappear, but it was Daigon in that body. Uh, and that didn't happen. And then I immediately messaged him in all caps when it's pick an object, and I was like, it has to be Kess's necklace or the meerkat. So the other option was the meerkat plushie. <laughs> True, yeah. Was the backup Which vessel. was there, right? Which was like, at, <laughs> yeah, around the table. Holding it, yeah. yeah. Because they put it that she was holding it, and I was like, think how ridiculous that would be. That my vessel's a fucking carnival toy. And it's like, anyways. But then I like the idea of also the <laughs> Kess vessel. Cause, and then that's also why the first hint was the vessel like levitating briefly when I came back because I was yeah. actually tied to that, not to the body body. Uh, yeah, so the, like, the body backup body. option was the meerkat, body, yeah, but yeah. I like the idea of the vessel also just because her and Kess have been like so tied together from the beginning. So it's yeah. like, we're just going to further complicate this relationship that you're now literally tied together. <laughs> like... Yeah. And like, you know, having to kind of be within 150 feet of Kess at all times, essentially, because Kess never drops the yeah. thing, right? When she yeah. pops into it, it just kind of drops to the floor. But, you know, that's about it. Um, I had kind of hoped that we'd go a bit longer before. Like, I wanted the reveal to be somehow, but obviously I couldn't orchestrate it. What I wanted to be like one or two sessions from then, and Kess for some reason has to go off, or the party separates, and I'm for some reason not with Kess. And as soon as we hit that 150 foot line, all of a sudden I just like passed out, and my body went limp, and a ghost appeared, and we'd all be like, what the hell? And yeah, like freaking it out. Yeah, but then Kess out. fucking went and called the fucking big boy cleric, yeah. and I was like, oh fuck. But we were, this. I was a bit heavy handed with the hints, because I was also just too excited, because we did the vessel, <laughs> I mentioned the food thing, I mentioned that she woke up, and I'm like clutching her vessel, because I know i'm connected to it but i didn't know how like we we laid a lot of hints so it made yeah, sense yeah. that i guess is perceptive guess is passive insight and perception is like stupid yeah ridiculous so yeah. it's fair i just part of me was like, like what are the odds targets. we go like three <sighs> yeah part of me is like what are the we, odds like, we go three or four sessions before they know and it would have been potential fun. <laughs> limbo imposed if like 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 the i don't know fucked up shit that could happen if somehow um well, the vessel would have to be destroyed, first of yeah. all. Mm -hmm. But, like, if the object you're bound to is destroyed and there is nothing else that you combine to within 150 feet, Just paralyzed. you are paralyzed. Yep. Not Until dead, the nearest thing comes in to... You are paralyzed. Like, if, if you, like, get fucking... What, what happens if you get plane shifted? Like, you can't be dragged back to your yep. bound object, surely. But, like, yep. like... What happens to the vessel if Kess dies? I mean, the vessel is it still an necklace. item. No one can interact yeah. with it or use it to its potential, but it's still an item that exists. Yeah, I right? specifically asked Dutch. I would still be bound to the vessel. Because I'm not bound to the vessel because of its magical properties oh. or its ties to yeah. Kess. It's, it's just, an it's an object that was yeah. nearby to cling on to and that it was attached to someone Daigon was very close with. So it was like a thing that I just kind of gravitated to. Unless there's to, like some sense. writing in the Tasha's uh, genie warlock that I'm unaware of that's like, oh, when you die, your vessel your goes kaput, but I doubt it. You know what I mean? 
And if that's true, we like the subclass just says, I would immediately bind to the next nearest available yeah. thing. So I could bind to my meerkat. I could bind to Brooks or Davian. I could bind to yeah. like an object that just happens to be there. Yeah. It would Wild be just... Even within 150 feet of things. So. No, I mean, in, in a hypothetical scenario where if the yeah. vessel, like Kess and the vessel if somehow it, If it goes died, wrong and someone time. else is there, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would just pick whoever's it would, closest. It would be some like fucking real sadistic scenario for you to end up in a situation that you do end up paralyzed with nothing yeah. else to like plus like i mean to... there's like That's some kind you'd of have help. to be in some fucking remote desert yeah to not exactly, have yeah. anything that you could protect yeah. to at least like, temporarily you... bind to for the only if way you're I like i'm sick of you know, oh i'll bind to this chair i'm sick of it now somebody breaks the chair please smile you know what i mean like, well the other thing is that <laughs> if the object is destroyed she goes unconscious and then if she comes back from unconsciousness she has to bind for, bind to something yeah. so someone would have to like somehow destroy the vessel and then put her in a space with nothing with and then nothing. heal her yeah but then also not like be nearby right yeah so it's, it's a lot it's but a it would very, be really fucked up if that happened it would be but it's <laughs> A super villain very intentional yeah. planning like someone yeah, exactly. would have to know yeah. exactly how this worked and then yeah. set up a very specific situation some like cleric that went like dark like... and like knows all about this shit so. yeah. yeah yeah um might as well tackle bell's other question then while we're at it uh, what problems if any do you predict for diagon now that she has to stay within 150 feet of cast at all times um it's a pretty long just way, right? a prop the only problem is like if we ever say a scenario where we like as a group the group gets like captured again and we're being imprisoned somewhere and if they choose to separate us for some reason <sighs> then like that could happen um really it's only or can or you know what could be a problem uh we were joking about um someone had the banishment spell and someone was joking about i'm gonna banish kes when she gets annoying just so we get some quiet what happens to me if kes yeah, gets banished to another plane because no... the vessel goes with her and i doubt they're at 150 feet of me to hold their plane so i, mean, I would go, go with, with her to yeah. the plane yeah. yeah so oh shit so really so the, the one, only baby? issue i see is yeah if someone tries to do something to kes i'm going but it's not really an issue for dagon because it's great it's like well it's great someone will know where she is and what happened to her and someone will be there with her but for the rest of the party it's like well now you're down two people yeah. i don't really the only issue i see i see more issues of because again the goal is to hide in my corpse when we're around people so it's like more normalcy and not like there's a ghost chilling with you it just i'm mostly worried about protecting the body because it has one hit point and if anything happens to it i can never possess it again honestly so... i even like Someone could throw like a rock that... at me just because they're annoyed and I lose the ability to possess my body. Like... I would rather... Okay, if this was like real life, which I know is stupid, but if it was <laughs> me in like as a member of the party, I would much rather chill with a ghost than a ghost possessing a dead body, even if it was that person. You know what I mean? Like that is yeah. still kind of kind of. I mean, that's the, also like, an EVP. option. Like, say Dagon's body does like, like get destroyed at some point. I mean, that's a very valid. Then I just a ghost Digan's traveling just a ghost with, you guys. with you guys. Yeah, and. You avoid suspicion by just possessing like one of us just temporarily yeah. no one's gonna even see you yeah i did think of that ethan when ethan joked and he threw something at me and when brooks threw something at diagon just to test my if i still had my monk reflexes in my head i went technically if dutch really wants to rule it technically that could have just fucked it because that still would have taken damage but obviously because we realized it was just like a catch this it wasn't yeah, a i'm trying to a, inflict a wounds. malicious yeah but you check yeah on paper rules as written you could have Fucked it all right there, Ethan. <laughs> Laura, you're on the show today. Why did you submit a question? <laughs> you fucking goober. Questions for other people that aren't me. <laughs> no, it's just like, I have a question for Duke. Go on, go on, Laura, ask your question. What do you want to ask Duke? Well, because I want to see now, I forgot. <laughs> I, I need to go look at the Discord to remember uh, what it was. Since Duke was, was the there. first person to put the idea in our uh, head, uh, what did he think was the likelihood of us choosing to explore that path? Uh, um, I thought it would ha I thought it would be... I did not think the odds would be higher than you being regular Dagon <laughs> again. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I, I thought it was going to be if you know some if something went catastrophically wrong with the resurrection, then that would have been an option. Not oh, the resurrection succeeded, <laughs> um, but you have said you'd rather be a fucking ghost than Dagon <laughs> come back. So, you know, roll another die and then oh. Like it's a ghost. I yeah. I don't know. I know you both were very enthused by the idea when I brought it up. Yeah. So I definitely I knew it was a possibility. It, like it was just like stored in the back of my mind somewhere, and I kind of kind of forgot about it. You know what I mean? I was like, oh yeah, that's a thing. I'd never heard I of it. Just why I, was I definitely knew it was a, it was a possibility. I just like 
Yeah, I, d I, I don't know. I, d I didn't think I didn't think it would be the preferred outcome. You know what I mean? Well, because I was cool talking to is. Dutch too. It's it's, it's part of, ninety percent is it's a great storytelling method, yeah. especially when a lot of her shit was linked to her physical appearance, and this now throws that a wrench into that of like, all right, well then that's not an issue anymore. But also, purely from a is. from a meta meta gaming standpoint. It also just makes it a lot easier for me to communicate with you guys now because I can True, talk yeah. as a ghost. So that will help yeah. too. <laughs> and it, it, it's 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 an interesting class. None of us have seen or like know anything about even Soko. You know, it's like True, yeah. Yeah. a completely new sort of experience for all of us. And we she love also Mad loves Mata. to play pranks, oh, and that's been a thing that she's done a lot in the past, but can never. So now it's like think of the infinite prank potential when I can haunt and possess things. She it's do just be, she do gonna be, be a prank, lot of fun. A little prankster, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> possess things unknowingly, and then all of a sudden yeah. you're slapping yourself in the face. Elsnow's gonna love this. Also, it's just because she'd she'd already been. Also, because I like the project as well, she's a tabaxi and the whole, like, cats having nine lives. I've been, like, attempted to be killed before. I've gone yeah. down multiple other fights. I've been revivified before. Like, to me, it also made sense that it's like, all right, you're, even for a cat, this is getting a lot. Like, maybe there should be some sort of consequence to how much, how much time you spend unconscious slash dead. <laughs> dead and or dying. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I guess I, there was a, there was like a moment I think that I was like, it, I think it was last session that I realized like, because Davian was the first to die, like properly die. Yeah. yeah. But now like, I feel like almost everyone's died at least once. Yeah, that dark, that, that, that fucking dark A general dude, uh, that fight. I have the document here. Before I'm that fight, <clears throat> before that fight, only Davian had died once. In that fight, Elazrin died, died once, Daigon died twice, and Kess died once. Yeah, Didn't Marcus four also deaths. die later. Marcus died Marcus to the lich. Too. Yeah. Yeah. So, so Davian went from the first and only one to die to suddenly four out of the six core party members have now died at least once. Yeah, and Brooks Brooks went unconscious, but you didn't die. Brooks didn't die. Brooks didn't die. Fight. Brooks was just unconscious. Yeah. So the only ones that haven't died yet are Brooks and uh, well, Jax. No, Jax. Yeah. So. Which is ironic. Which means all your DCs the for the fucking resurrections have gone up. <laughs> Yep. Resurrections and revivifies and <laughs> I guess true resurrection or whatever is infallible or I feel yeah well it. true resurrection is the only thing that can bring me true resurrection and wish are the only things that can bring yeah. me back the rules currently. as written in lingering soul any sort of resurrection can bring yeah, yeah, back yeah. Properly. we didn't like that because I'm already a fucking advocate for making death rules a lot more strict advocate for death advocate for death I decided yeah. no so we're gonna we're gonna up the ante on that one a little bit as well. So only true true resurrection or wish can bring Dagon back normally uh, without yep. fail, pretty much. It is always interesting, like fantasy worlds, that like you can resurrect and revive and heal. Dealing with death, like actually making death a thing, like just as an example. There's a, a Final Fantasy cutscene that will ring true in my head forever from Final <laughs> Fantasy XIV mm -hmm. where this little green fucker gets roundhouse kicked into a wall. <laughs> and like in that scene in that like cutscene, like there's dead people all over the place. And it's like, I'm with a white mage who could bring all of these people back to life. Like what why isn't that a thing in this world? Why like making permanent death make sense is difficult but important important because otherwise you end up with these silly situations where it's like well no one should die ever then like yeah plus i f also feel like uh the moment during our D, &D campaigns the moment people start players start looking at death as an inconvenience not as something to that is cat catastrophical i failed as a dm because i feel like death should always um death should always be scary Yes, you have clerics that have access to revivify and that sort of shit. Cool. But that shouldn't be a guaranteed success. Or else the entire, like, oomph out of a potential death... Like, because, especially at later level, revivify is a third level spell. But when yeah. you get to the point where you have, like, six fucking level spell slots, you can just upcast revivify. That doesn't matter. So you can have, like, 12 revivifies a fucking fight. You know what I mean? I don't want... And that's why the more 
times you die in our like campaign, um, every time you die, the DC goes up. Every time you die, the DC goes up by one. Yeah, um, I mean, Rick, it's just, like, I, even, I want death to have even significant... outside of that. There's like the onus on us as players to like not also make dumb choices. Play it out that that death is fucking important. Like, yeah, because we could easily, especially at the point we're at, like sweep it aside because we're gonna get revivified, and it's like, yeah, whatever, no biggie. Feels it like saves coming. It's like yeah, literally, literally. You yeah. you could you could really just not take it seriously at all, and I think. You know, it sucks. It takes I it think, takes the risk out of everything. You know what I mean? Other than, like, only a TPK would be scary at that point, and like that's not very. Other than like happen. in the thick of a fight, where did Aladrin get revivified mid-fight by Marcus? Yeah. Yes. Like that kind of got glossed over. Yeah, I mean, I rolled it was in and the I, thick I, of a really ridiculous fight. It's like I rolled for it, but it succeeded. But like, yeah, that's it. You know, yeah. Like, boom. Yeah, but, like, when Davian died for the first time, like, that was a pretty big deal. Like, yeah. you know? And, that and was Elazar's first time revivifying anyone. Yeah. That was the party's first, like, actual death. Like, that, that, yeah, that, yeah, was, yeah. that was a significant moment, yeah. Uh, but, yeah, like, I've gone on this tangent a million times, but I feel like yeah. if you run any sort of tabletop RPG and you make it so that at you up the ante on death, character death are wonderful storytelling devices. Yeah. Make combat decisions, uh, make it so that people have to think about what they do because there's consequences and not like, a, oh, yeah. Oh, well, if this goes wrong, I'll just get revivified, lol. I, I, keep them, you know, it's. It, I think it's better for the storytelling, but it's also better for your player experience. I feel like as a player, yeah. I would much more enjoy a combat, a serious fucking boss fight, knowing if I fuck up or my dice work against me, I might be dead. Instead of being like, yeah, whatever. Uh, we have two clerics. They can revivify us. Who cares? That's boring, no? And even looking back at campaign one, a lot of my favorite parts the, were very centric to a death that happened. Like, the, my favorite things that came out of it. Like, the whole... Like, what happened with Tremeris, what happened with Aberan. Like, a lot of them involved a death of some kind. Uh, yeah. And, like, so they, they become just very good vehicles and also they then for those that remain they become incredible bonding experiences yeah. so it makes more sense that your party would do life or death things for each other or if it because you're that much closer yeah or like yeah. or as a player deciding like because I, I i think that's what so could it when the wrong like i think the wrong had the option to come back but he was like no nah, i'm good man i'm chilling yeah kind of good where i'm at um that's also a very valid option you know what i mean if you feel like your character like if the only reason you want to bring your character back is because lol lol i like playing this character but you then stop the thinking. You're like, oh, wait. But as a storyteller, this would be really good if I decide not to come back. Like sometimes that, you know. Yeah, because it's also different. Why there's not? a different way to approach it. If you're just playing a home game, not for anyone, like no audience, no stream, no recording, no podcast, then it's also very different. If you just want to play a character because you're having fun and playing it, it's your home game, sure. But if you're doing an actual play, a podcast or something, you're also that, because then the storytelling also becomes part of what you're doing. And there is yeah. that added layer, not that it should ever be like the be all end all, but there's the added layer of what would make a better story to watch or to listen yeah, to. Yeah, that definitely well, also so. weighs in. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, yeah, I, I like, I, I think that that does play somewhat of a part, but I think a story that's fun to watch is a story that's just fun to play. You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, no, 100%. Like, it's still, 100%. Co like agree. committing for the sake of narrative, whether it's sort of a, an isolated game or not, yeah. is still mm. it's still gonna be a more enjoyable like uh, or like rewarding yeah. experience, especially yeah. with the DM's challenges that just so. speak. <laughs> Dude, I feel like I feel at a loss sometimes, man. Like, uh, and well, I think there's a couple of questions kind of re leading into the subject, so I'll, I'll wait, but. It's been hard, dude. This campaign is, is written in such a different way than campaign one, which I quite like because it gives you guys way more freedom to decide where you go and what you do next and what you don't do. But it also makes it very hard to prepare sometimes. You know what I mean? Like, last campaign was fairly linear. Like, it was like a linear open world game, whereas this is just completely like, hey, fuck it, man. The world is your oyster. Go ham. Here's a couple of side quests. Do, do whatever the fuck you want. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, which it Be makes it. Quest. I just had a thought. Makes it. Oh, oh, God. This, 
this will make it very interesting whenever we get back to that really tangential uh strahd storyline because now he's not the only undead bitch guess what <laughs> see how that fucks with things <laughs> not at all i don't think it's, it's fucking strahd, i can do dude. i can do radiant damage to him now what do you mean I'm that's sure true no that's bad. true yeah that's pretty true dude yeah and uh, okay um <laughs> anyway well uh, yeah pixie fucking mvp of the channel by the way hell yeah uh, it's been very fucking supportive recently and uh, it's uh, insane thank you once again uh also submitted some yeah. questions um pixie wants to know why davian decided not to go into the room was it just uh you know i'm just back from the hells i need some time to relax or was it more of a giving the rest of the party some space or was it just an emotional decision uh, you know what was davian's reasoning for not wanting to be in the room when Diagon got resurrected. Pessimism mostly, because if it didn't work, like, <laughs> don't want to be, like, he knew it wasn't involved. <laughs> like he knew it wasn't going to be one of the contributing factors, but yeah, we just got back from hell, man. Like, <laughs> give me a fucking break. Like, it, ba it was basically a case of like, I think, I think what he, what he or I was hoping for was like, he would sit out there and he would just relax as best he can and tr try not to think about it. And then Diagon would walk out of the door. You know what I mean? Mm. Like that was the like ideal scenario was that he would sit out there. It like, like, I don't know, like a, like a scene in a fucking sitcom where one of the characters has a baby or whatever. And then like, You're waiting outside. everyone else is waiting. Then they come out with the baby <laughs> or whatever. It's like, okay, I, I, I'll sit out on the lawn and then one by one the whole party's gonna come out of the door and Diagon's gonna be there and then we're all gonna jump around in the in the grass or whatever <laughs> um of course it didn't go that way but it went you know it still went a positive direction but it was i mean in that like, moment it looked like it went that way she walked out in her no, physical someone, body someone came and got him <laughs> yeah someone came oh, and got yeah, that, him in. Sorry, she was yeah, still laying yeah. down yeah so it was like yeah it was positive right but you know not exactly like the the show he expected it to be, but it was positive. And um, I, I just, yeah, I, it's like, I'm really trying, like, I mean, we talk about, you know, death death has to be impactful. Mm -hmm. But when you take into account the just the sheer amount of shit, like, it was pretty brutal even the first, you know, few weeks that they were together. But yeah, we show up to this town there's just ravaged by devils and like people are just straight up being tortured and there's like piles of bodies and then yeah. we go to hell yeah and yeah, then like, it's no like no one's had I, time to process it was trauma. like yeah. this is definitely like the darkest and like grittiest the campaign has been so far we're just like and literal like, hell on earth just trying like, i i, I kind of i don't know if you guys noticed but i've kind of tried yeah. to be a little more creative and descriptive about the, your surroundings and the things you see the things you smell the things you hear I'm kind of been trying to uh, to up my. I feel like as a DM, that's probably where I lack the most, and I partially blame that on a bit of a language barrier. But as well as because I just don't have the vocabulary to have all these yeah. explanations that I can just either pull out e of my ass. either that or a confidence thing because of uh, yeah. what you perceive as a language barrier. Yeah, exactly. So I'm try. I've been trying to kind of play more into like making sure that I cover all your senses, right? So what do you see? What do you hear? What do you smell? Yeah. Uh, uh, so the last few areas you've been in have been a bit more uh, thoroughly described, uh, and it just happened to be that they were also a bit more morbid than your usual. Yeah, it's been horrible. <laughs> it's been fucking horrible. But now you're gonna and go to like, a forest. There's gonna I, I, be I flowers to, everywhere I and cute animals be, like, and cute I want that birds. To be like <laughs> accounted <laughs> for, <laughs> I should say, you know, in, in the distance and great. Some somehow reflected like. Davian's taking in the shit that's not doing him any good, like remotely. And then we set foot on like actual material plain ground where there's grass and you can hear birds. Uh -huh. And it's like, I really, right now, I don't think I want to go into the fucking mortuary and try and bring someone back to life. <laughs> like stare at Daigon's dead body with my fingers crossed. No, they can all go in and Daigon will come out alive and I was just I didn't have to just look at her dead for five minutes when I couldn't just not do that since I'm not, you know, directly involved. What sounds like so, birds you make? Know. Shut the fuck up, Shatter, right? You fucking yes. Did it ever cross your mind at all that was there ever any concern like how's it gonna look 
if she did come back and I'm the only one who's who's not there. Like, and she looks around, like, who's there? Were you ever worried at all about what her opinion uh, would be of that? D Davian is pragmatic and selfish, so <laughs> I don't I don't think he was too worried about how he would be perceived. Okay. I think he was just counting on they'll understand I don't I don't need this right now. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Oh, no, it's it, like it, like, there's there's going to be something where a penny drops for all of us. Because like, it's been multiple sessions of just, we don't have time to address what's happened to us because we need to move on to the next thing. And now the minute we have, we now have some travel downtime in a relatively peaceful place. So mm. that's all going to hit like a truck over the next few sessions where everyone's going to... Yeah, you're going to vibe, but this, it's a day travel whatever. to the woods. You're in sunny, sunny Segalia. It's like, what, the equivalent of September. So it's still it's still definitely like summerish, right? Like it's it's a vibe. Yeah. It's good weather. The most threatening thing you'll come across is some cutthroats that are like, oh, give me your purse. You know, oh, it's going to be blasted. After all the shit you've, you've, you've gone through... Bless. <laughs> no, and it's gonna be like, no, it's gonna be like, oh, we're strolling down the road, and then like we'll see smoke rising over the horizon, and someone's gonna have a like moment where they're like, they just cut back to being in hell or seeing a pile of burning bodies, or like <laughs> something like we'll be in, in the, and it's just gonna be like, we'll like stop dead in our tracks and just be like, oh fuck, man, really, that's in there right now, you know? It's yeah, just, well, yeah, 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 well, um. Laura, another question from uh -huh. Pixie. Um, how does it feel to be back for it to not have fully worked? Uh, does it add to Daigon's dislike of her body? Yeah. Uh, I mean, I, yeah. I, I guess kind of for I guess for you as a person, this has been something that you kind of decided on for well, it to even be a possibility, right? But yeah, yeah. Well, it's funny because like the the whole for it to not have fully worked as from a player perspective, this worked perfectly because this is why I was yeah. the most excited to play, but I didn't want to force it on the story. I wanted to see if it would happen. So in character, obviously it's like, it didn't work. Something went wrong out of character. It's like, Oh, success. Um, but so that part it's, it's very mixed emotions. Again, in and out because I also thought the immediate reaction on paper is like, Oh good. I'm no longer tied to this thing. That has been a source of my insecurity and my pain and my otherness. But then I also was like, well, yeah, well, it, like as in in the game, she's always she's never fit in, even in her own people, because of the hairlessness and then the talking you can't fit in with others that aren't are tabaxi, whether she's hairless or not, because she can't communicate the normal way and blah blah blah. Um, but then I was like, the moment of oh well, like fuck this body, I don't want it. It's never served me. Like it's only brought me pain. But then it's like okay. But I'm still now other. I am still separate from the bulk of like civilized society. Or it was like I'm a I'm a ghost. I'm not a. I'm sure most people I'm not a person anymore in that way. So there was that moment of oh oh shit. Like if there was a momentary like this is great. This is better. This is in a way what I wanted. A weird way to go about it. But then it's also like no, I still have the same problem, just in a new way. And it was also the idea of then immediately leaving behind that body there was this weird hesitancy of like i i don't want to be in it but i also don't want to leave it yet and it's it's a lot it's going to take a, at least a few sessions for her to process and figure it out she doesn't really know yet right now it has not increased her issues with her confidence and her appearance but it also definitely hasn't improved them i'll say guys chat relax what is happening? Guys. Ch chat Stop chat it. relax guys calm down just chill right. calm down relax thank you but <laughs> Calm down. <laughs> oh, dude. Oh, man. I mean, shit. That means we can maybe get some new emotes done. Maybe see if we can actually get a fucking proper intro done for our, for the stream. So thank you. Like, everything is going towards better quality D&D no stream. streams and all that stuff. So appreciate it. Uh, For Dutch. Were there any other fun possibilities for the ritual to mess up? No. It's just death in it. The other way that could have Death, gone. success, or this middle ground. <laughs> yeah. It's a very, uh... 33.333333 split, you know? It's very much dead, alive, alive asterisk. Um... <laughs> that's really all that is. Because I've had this, like... I did this last campaign, too. I, might, I, have, I have a system for resurrections. <laughs> and, like, I have different systems for different forms of resurrections. Revify, I have, like... Oh, it's just a skill check. Um, resurrection rituals. Uh, uh, just 
four checks, three people have to... Three people besides the cleric that is actually performing the ritual have to partake and try and convince and blah, 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 that comes with checks. Or, uh, so, like, but at the end of the day, the, the end result will either be dead or alive in most cases. It's, there's not yeah. really any ways. Like, like yeah, that, the only way that can mess up is... Guys, Jesus fucking Christ. Y'all just uh, out here breaking records. Y'all, y'all, <laughs> dang, y'all. Sheesh. Um, so yeah, like, as far as, were there any other fun possibilities for the ritual to mess up? No. It's very, very, very standard. Either you do it or you don't kind of situation. Or you do it. That kind yeah, of plays into, the next, plays into the next question I had for you, Dutch, which was, what was your most desired outcome? Because you, of course, asked me, and mine was the lingering soul. But what was your, as a DM, preferred? Was it the same thing, or was it, like, a full success? Oh, Fuck. Was it a new uh, character just for the fun of that? Because you also know the ties the new character would have The thing had. is, all three would have come with cool storytelling beats. I think as far as most... Imp I always tend to... Fucking Jesus. Fuck! Shut up! No. God, we're guys! Trying to, we're trying to talk here. Jesus. Fuck! Thank you so much, guys. <laughs> Jesus. Um, As far as... I tend to, as a DM, I want to go for whatever will have, will, will have the most impact, right? That's what I want to do. And I think the lingering soul thing at this point in time is the most impactful to the storytelling. So I think my yeah. preference would have been the lingering soul thing. So I'm very so we're glad. On the same that, page. Uh, yeah, I feel like as far as storytelling goes, that is the most impactful. Um, situation and it happened and now we can explore that and i'm very excited um how's having a ghost going to affect the balancing or the loss of level item attunement uh it i mean laura is definitely at a slight disadvantage compared to the rest of the uh group power level wise but 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 um the way magic items and stuff work for for daigon now is she can have five magic items like so like if the party goes shopping or finds something and no one can really use it but Diagon is like yo i can just oh. and now i have this ability stuck to me forever um so like she can still use magic items so it's just a matter of finding items that she wants to have um i just found out i just came up with the shittiest life hack way to use that too because you said go shopping we could go to a magic shop literally just pick the things we want of the abilities sit there and then for as long as an hour and just siphon the as long as Kess hangs out outside or inside the magic shop oh for an hour, I can God. just siphon magic items and not pay for them. And they and won't make fucking them useless. Know. Oh and they wouldn't God. know shit. Oh my That's yeah. So I mean, yeah. Magic shop immediately. But they would oh. know they would see the ghost standing there for not an if I'm hour. in Kess. Not if I'm in Kess. But then they would see Kess standing Well, no, it's a ritual. So, like, basically... You'd just be browsing. The you'd have to... No, but it's a ritual, right? So that you're... you're, you're, you're you you need to be with the doing, item. Like you still could, item, like but you'll have there, to like, have somebody distracting the fuck out of whoever is around you to make sure... On. You know what I mean? Like, you, you technically hold still on. could. It says... It uh -huh. is a ritual. Now, it does not say I need to be physically touching the object. It does not say I need to be, like, you know, it's, sat there oh, doing it's, it. If it's a ritual cast, <laughs> then you're spending time focusing yeah, on doing right? that thing. Like, you're doing that thing Kess for an is hour. going to have to... Either you are going to have to be separate from Kess, stood with the item for an hour, which is already sus, or Kess is going to have to stand there so you can possess Kess so they don't see the ghost while you do that. Like, it's like... That, like, it's, it's, whole... it, like it's definitely possible, It's but sure. like, it's going to be hard, but it's possible, yeah. It's, but someone's going to have to be with the, like, who, or... whoever's in the store just going, what did this do? What did you just do? Or <laughs> we wait till the store is closed. We wait till the store is closed, Fucking and I can go through in. walls and I break in. At oh night my and god! Just because they're asleep, but they're not in the oh, store. Oh, you can go shit. through. She can go through okay, walls, guys. Walls, <laughs> she can go through walls, guys. She can just come back after closing time. <laughs> I've created a monster. <laughs> I'm, not saying, I'm, I'm not saying I'm gonna do it. I'm just saying I had the thought that if I was, because keep in mind. Daigon's well, a lawful character. True, so Daigon is a goody two shoes here. when it comes to I'm law. Even though she's a ghost, she's like, oh, they can't hang me now, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> she just fucking breaks all the laws. Oh, fuck. Uh, that maybe that's why I lost my again. Law. Fuck. Yeah, that, I mean, in theory, on paper, you could do that, yes. Um, but, um. Anyways. As far as items and stuff go, like, she has none right now that are active, but it's a matter of finding those, right? Yo, as far as, like, the I level. I was really pissed. 
if I was really pissed off at a party member, because I don't need to sleep and everyone else does, I could just, while they're sleeping, unmagic their shit. <laughs> like a that's bitch. Fucked, that's fucked up. <laughs> um, anyway. <laughs> but um, as far as level goes, it's I don't think it's that big of a deal. Um, I feel like combat in general for Lingering Soul is a little harder and challenging because there's a lot of like ifs. Like what if this, yeah. what if that? But we'll we'll kind of have to see how that goes, and in, 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 in you know we'll see what happens with the next few sessions, because like on paper, it seems fine, a little more challenging, but fine. But we'll never know how in actuality mm -hmm. that'll play out, right? Yep. Um. Last question: This was a particular outcome. We just did that. Uh, Sassy asked some questions. Laura, Duke, she enjoyed your birthdays. Yeah, we talked about that at the beginning yeah. of the stream. <laughs> Uh, we talked about that on, on DS as well. Um, I got this for my birthday, which I'll use to make my next D&D character. So I'm very excited. Oh, it's a board game just, about making tabletop Pocky. characters. I was just eating Pocky, but Pixie got me for my birthday. So <laughs> Pocky? I think, yeah, I think there was something else, but, but I, it might have been... I'll need to DM Pixie about it because I'm not 100%. 100%. <laughs> uh, uh, my birthday itself is pretty uneventful, but March is a hell of a month right now. So, uh, you know. We take those. <clears throat> my, I officially ordered the what, custom dice for my wedding last night because of oh. how well the birthday stream went. So that's pretty pog. Custom dice, baby. What the fuck is that? What is that giraffe, dude? It's a giraffe. Yeah, giraffe. Why does it look Who like it's made in paint? This? I have not rolled my new dice yet. They are fucking sweet, though. Again, I opened them at the start of last stream, so if you want to see that, just at the <laughs> True, true, true. Um, we got a real good close up of like, because they're liquid core and there's glitter inside them and shit. It's crazy. Glitter? Yeah, like, very fancy. Um, let's have a look see here. For me, what did you enjoy most last session? It was a lot, to be honest. Not the break. The break was stressful. The break We're was trying stressful. to get this organized in 15 minutes. <laughs> Um, I think what I enjoyed most was, I get, and this might be a little morbid, <laughs> but f kind of finally having the party, like, uh, when the party kind of realized, oh, it's not going to be as easy as just cleric perform spell, boom, she's back. Oh, oh, we have to do something. Oh, fuck. And then like the, you know, <laughs> Jax, Brooks and Kess, you know, saying their words, actively partaking in the ritual. I, I enjoyed that quite a lot. Uh, what's the biggest difference with this campaign compared to the last campaign? Specifically for your weekly prep. It's a fucking nightmare. Um, <laughs> are you more relaxed prepping for next session? No. Quite the contrary. Uh, <laughs> do you need to do a lot of world building during sessions? Okay. Um, so, like I already kind of touched about, last campaign was fairly linear. There were, it was like, here's main quest. Go to place where main quest is. Oh, there's an optional side quest in that same area. Do main quest, move on. This is more like like the, the the party right now has like a quest log, and then there's the main quest. That's like the right now the main quest is the Helm of Arrows. That's kind of your main storyline right now because that links into the the night webs and that links into the override and all that bullshit. But you have like fucking ten side quests that you can you can decide to do on a whim, and just go there, right? Um, so for me, especially at points in time like when there's like they've just done this big story beat what are they doing next i have no idea what the fuck to do so i prepare everything like a little bit and hope you know what i mean yeah. um but it's stressful because i i feel like i'm never prepared enough at this campaign right um do we need to do a lot of world building during sessions imagine. i do not because what i did manage to do and decided for myself is that the majority of this campaign or at least the initial like you know the first like half of it is going to mostly take place in a pretty isolated area that is Keldar, one province on the new continent because there's only one other province that is settled and that's on the other side of the fucking thing. They could go there, but like by the time that that happens, I'll have, you know, I'll have time, ample time to prepare that. Uh, all the other places no one has really gone to, so there's very li fairly little reason to go to except for like maybe do some initial scouting, but that's about it. So I prepared that area and like all the towns and all the places and thing in that zone at, at the start of the campaign, that was mapped out, that was ready, this is, we're good to go. Uh, and, obviously, 
places like where they are now, Sagalia and shit. I've already that that's been in the fucking that's been in the bank for years. So, uh, world building wise, I'm good because even though they're on a whole new continent with 14 provinces, due to the fact that none of them except for two are settled, so and not even been explored properly yet. Uh, their likelihood of them actually going there on the short term, very, very, very unlikely. Um, and when that does happen, so does happen, there's going to be a lot of build up to it, so that gives me time to prepare that in case I need to. Um, but as far as like the weekly prep, dude, fuck me. Um, I've learned a lot from the first campaign in writing. I've learned a lot from this campaign in writing, and ideally for a potential campaign three. What I want to do is kind of like take the best of both writing styles and mesh them together and then I'll have my ideal, this is how you write a campaign baby and that's what I can use moving forward, you know what I mean? Because <laughs> <laughs> I love the, the freedom of choice you have here in this campaign compared to the other one. But like I hate the fact that I just feel like I'm never prepared enough. So mm. I need to find a way to kind of get the best of both worlds. Um, but yeah, uh, I'm, dude, I feel, I, I, I'm a new DM. I've been, <laughs> I've been DMing this for like five years now ish four and a half but I, st I still feel like such a baby dude I, I have so much to learn and I learn every fucking week I learn more about the game but also learn more about writing and 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 storytelling and whatnot and I feel like even with 20 years experience I'll still feel like I'm a new DM and I'm still learning because there's just so much man because you're not just writing your storytelling your world building you're uh, also playing within the confines of a video or uh, video of a game with a plethora of rules and 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 shit. So like, there's so much fucking detail and and technicalities that I feel like um, twenty years time we'll all be playing one D and D. Well, I don't know. We might give one D and D a skip, boys. We might stick to five E. I'm not gonna lie, because um, <clears throat> one D and D don't look that great. <clears throat> I'm not a fan of the bulk of one D and D so far. Don't look that great, guys. We might stick to five E for a few more years, but that's alright. <clears throat> no whole regress. <laughs> One D and D feels like they they're trying to over streamline, over simplify to get more people in, but it's like you're you're now more successful than you've ever been. Like your 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 numbers are growing without having to over simplify things. Like I don't I'm know. Like I would fuck with the Pathfinder campaign. I'm not gonna lie. Pathfinder is very like the the com the, the comparison that I've always been given is like in D and D, your characters are meant to be these heroes. In Pathfinder, you're just a dude. You know, yeah. You're, you're just a dude trying to th do things, <laughs> which is a yeah. cool concept, cool idea. Hey man, a regular dude can kill giant rats. Yeah. But a regular dude can also, like, try and throw a fucking Molotov and set himself on fire on accident and die. You know what I mean? But that's unlikely, even for a regular <laughs> guy, you know? <laughs> I don't know, man. <laughs> um, anyway, Soko also made some questions. Um, but, like, Pathfinder has fun stats. Like, it's like, rather than just, you know skill checks and stuff it's like oh what's your skull duggery it's like oh you go well you can just like <laughs> so, do the tomfoolery check like oh. <laughs> it's not fun uh laura uh -huh. yeah that's, that's exactly how bd's last pathfinder character died which is why i wanted to bring it up because it's funny man tried to throw a nice. molotov what? and set himself on fire <laughs> Amazing. Incredible. You told me that like three years ago, Ethan, and it just stuck with me, dude. I've always like, I don't know why, but I've always remembered that. It's fucking funny. Um, Soko asks, Laura, uh, are you going to miss playing Prezi? It's fun. Like, paladins are fun just because they can do so much. And like, even when I was like f fucking up all my roles just because of my auras and stuff, I still feel like I'm being useful to the party. So in one way, paladin's a great class for Laura who rolls like garbage as a player. Um, but obviously no, like the, I'm not, I'm not gonna miss it. It doesn't mean I didn't enjoy it. I very much had fun with it. And I liked that Dutch also found a way to throw in a little tie with the character I made just to be a placeholder to another party member. So if they ever showed up again now as an NPC or something, because I have my other character, that'd be cool. And Dutch, uh, can explore that connection he put in there a little more just to make them a bit more fleshed out. Uh, but yeah. I'm obviously just, I'm very excited for both just experimenting with a literally new experimental class as well as the storytelling thing. So I'm not going to miss, miss Prezi too much, but they were fun. I enjoyed them. I think they were what was needed. It's also great because to play though a character that was just like low stakes, 
just here to help for a few sessions and not have to deal with the emotions the rest of the party was going through. And I'm just like out here being one step up from an AI. <laughs> and it was fun. I'm going to implement microtransactions in our D&D, guys. <clears throat> You're gonna you're gonna be able to buy. We're gonna go the Ubisoft approach. You're gonna be able to buy time buy savers, levels. buy time savers, buy equipment, buy level ups, buy resources, gold. buy gold. You know, just PayPal me, yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, for Jick, is Davian mad at Kasuth for not helping him? Always. <laughs> always. <laughs> I feel like he always is. Yeah. This angsty. Uh, Feels like he's entitled to more than he's getting. We went through a lot to get that. It feels like he's been very non-active and not present in general in like party shenanigans period. Like especially from an outside yeah. perspective, it looks like we did this. We got this tier. All right, Davian can play with fire now. We did all that so Davian can play with fire casually. Nothing really. <laughs> well, else that is that, like. that is the <laughs> reward. You it's know, the, you know, he you can, can play all, fire he, now. He is That's he's it. a yeah. warlock now, and like the more yeah. he Blame. divulges into that, the more he gets. But like also, I think I think he looks at like. <clears throat> Kess's relationship with Blue, despite the fact that Kess is literally like his granddaughter or whatever, mm -hmm. and is like, Where's Why is my deity when not do I, that? When do I get mine? You know, when, <laughs> what, right? Like, it's, um, I don't know, man. He keeps asking for help and not getting it. And, and the thing is, as well, like, I think the last time Kosuth has been like, Okay, listen, I know you want more, blah, blah, blah. He mentioned, like, you know, going to. A place, right? Going yeah. To a place yeah. in a very hot uh -huh. area. Mm -hmm. So I, the thing is about Kosuth, like in all <laughs> elemental lords, for that matter, they're not gods. They're not these benevolent no. beings. They have their own fucking interests at at heart. Like, the, the, and the only reason that Kosuth is has granted you the warlock. Dude, he comes up with a with. wilder, more incorrect spelling of Kosuth. That is crazy. Like, like he spells different every week. I swear. <laughs> Yeah. Um, but like, the thing is, like, he's he's not a god. He is like, I have my own motivations, and Davian is a tool that I can use to help me. And in return, yeah, I'll give him some cool shit, whatever. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. It's like it's like, oh, Davian can cast burning hands. He can cast create bonfire, control fire, eldritch blast. Plus, there's also another like <clears throat> like that is the boon. There's you also, know. like, another aspect of Davian's backstory that hasn't really properly been introduced yet, you know? Regarding to do with a certain place. Um, uh, yeah. And once that all kind of comes into play, that's when, you know, that's when Fireman will be like, okay, listen, man, here you go, fucking... You know? But it's like, see, there's levels to that. And you've done this one thing, this one trial, passed, okay, cool. It's it's, but a, it's the one more trial of a relationship was like, like three trials. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like it's it's more of those thing of like you keep proving yourself, you'll keep getting cool yeah. shit. You got you proved yourself, you got tier one of cool shit, and now now Davian starts like bitching at him every time something goes wrong, and he's like, This this fucking guy. You know what I mean? Give yeah, him an inch and they much. take a mile. God. Literally, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like that's kind of what's yeah. going on right now. <laughs> so he's like, I to fucking give this guy one fucking finger, and now he's like I don't know. I think I, I think that like there's still and understandably so uh Davian sees or feels a disconnect between the sacrifices he made to earn these powers and the um the payoff. Right? Mm -hmm. He faced death multiple times to get those tears and it's etc. Et and like doesn't feel that powerful. So there's still this, like, there's still a big disconnect between this is what it cost me and I've gotten very little. So when it's, uh, when there is a situation where it's like, man, y y you could probably help here and you're not, like, it still feels like that sacrifice hasn't paid off. Even though, oh, he can, you know, cast fire, but fucking everyone, it, you know, everyone and his mum can cast fire around here. So it's like... Yeah, but you couldn't before. No. Right? No, but it's still like I can cast entangle already. You know, like it's it, it was it worth almost dying three times. <laughs> Figure it out. But uh, I get that. But I'm also kind of like you know you've 
No, I mean this isn't yeah. me. This isn't no, me yeah. criticizing what has come from it. This is just Davian's understanding is I sacrificed a shit ton and haven't got my money's worth yet. And that, that's yeah. That's and the thing is, like, the more he's gonna like push that narrative, the more Kosuth's gonna be like, okay, this guy isn't ready yet. You know what I mean? Yeah, probably. Yeah. <laughs> so. Uh, it's kind of shooting. Because kind of shooting complain. himself. Yeah, Ethan, right Ethan now. said Davian. Davian paid five hundred for a Glock and he got a BB gun. And I think what it more is is Davian paid five hundred for a Glock, and right now he's got the magazine, and next he'll get the bullets, and then he'll get like the slide, and then he'll get the like firing pin, and then he'll and like, you know, he wanted that shit cash on delivery, you know, loaded, <laughs> cocked, ready to go. But that's not how it works. Nope. Um, yeah. <clears throat> And like a more of the the thing is though because the elemental lords are so heavily tied to the main storyline naturally th through progression of the main storyline there's going to be more Kosuth related things kind of forced upon you which yeah, will also just unlock the way that D&D &D right? works yeah he's a uh, first or he's a second level warlock like yeah like you, you are a second, exactly but I also like you know because we've kind of established Kosuth we've established we need to establish the fourth elemental lord a bit more which is you yeah. know tied to lazarin once all four of those have been properly established uh they they you know they said like hey we're gonna call a summit and you're all gonna show up and we're gonna talk about what the fuck do its override thing and what happened to the protector of this fucking you know why did this content suddenly show up blah, blah, blah. that's that's the that's the main story arc and because they're so tied the elements are so tied closely tied to the main story arc you're naturally kind of going to be forced onto doing stuff with and for kosuth naturally and like right now you haven't really gotten to the point yet so you know the level ups have been ranger blah blah but once we get back on the like main storyline train properly there's going to be a lot more elemental tie-ins and there's going to be a lot more opportunities for davian to be like oh hey shit oh, you know what i mean and that'll you know that problem will sort itself out pretty much yeah um just matter of time uh for dutch What's your favorite monster you've gotten to use? Fuck me dead. Um, <laughs> what a way to go. Shit. I don't know, man. I love monsters. Monsters are cool as fuck. Uh, this campaign? Aboleth's pretty cool. Abeleth's that was the one monster. I think I've been the most scared of, was the Aboleth. Um, I also, I'm, I'm a sucker for Illithid. I don't know why. I love Illithid. So, you know, Abolith got... turned me into a fish creature. Forgot about that. Suck you better fun to fight because of charm effects. Yeah, but I don't know. Uh for me, I think what I I like the like super fucking out there. What I, I I just like to throw you guys CR20 enemies and scare you. And nerf them and to nerf our them to shit so that they're <laughs> balanced, you know? So that's kind of my thing. So like Illithid. Uh you're not really supposed to fight those just yet, but you Actually, you didn't even find Illithid. You fight a fucking whatever level up. Il uh, Illitharid. Illitharid or, or some something shit like that. that. Yeah, like basically. I literally just wrote Uber Illithid. Yeah, in like their notes, evolution. You fought a Lich at level 7. You know, shit like that. Shit you're not supposed to fight, but, you know. That's what I, I, I don't know. That's what I like to do. Well, when we go to the Whispering Woods, give us some shit we're actually supposed to fight. Because I think that's been the same in Dungeons like Campaign yeah, 1. Yeah. And there's someone who's no, you cool. will, you will, you will. Like, this is the majority of DD I've played, you know. I haven't really seen the middle of the monster manual yet. You know, <laughs> we've done goblin spiders and rats, and then we've done all oh, liches, illithid, beholders. Yeah, no, give me we, a, will, we will. Oh, also... I think we fought displace a beast at some point, but you know, give me a displace a beast every once in a while. Yeah, no, yeah, or like no, you a will. werewolf. Like this, or the, um, the way the Whispering Woods arc is going to go is has completely changed due to I don't want to overexpose you to a bunch of fucked up shit. Um, right. So the Whispering Woods. We need time to more. heal. It's gonna be a lot more mellow. It's gonna be more of like instead of the plan I had with the Whispering Woods was like there was some corruption there and you had to take it out, blah blah. Now it's just gonna be like these people are gonna find you and you're gonna to have to prove your worth through some trials, you know. Type of shit. But very like right. very like confined and controlled by them and never really at never really in a fucked up um uh, so you know, they're gonna have you cleanse the forest of some animals that have been wreaking havoc shit like that you know what i mean like definitely more mellow casual D, &D type shit because i feel that like means gonna be right at be... home and the fire damage is actually gonna do damage and it's gonna yeah, feel exactly, great exactly, and exactly and this is my come up dude march is my month right now let's go <laughs> let's get it uh last couple of questions are from sellotape brody um <laughs> for laura 
What were you, <laughs> what were your and Digan's thoughts on the words given by Jax, Kess, and Brooks during the resurrection? Yeah. Uh, well, I guess we already kind of went like Digan's thoughts on session, right? When everyone else is deafened. So, you know, but uh, yeah, if you want to just recap, recap that, I guess. Yeah. Um, well, again, the one that ironically, because he rolled the worst, but the one that on paper had the strongest effect and like pulled her back the most, I guess was Jax's because even it's like right before like her her death obviously she was coming to the learn I have actual like friends and people that care about me but it's still very different from having someone who would consider you like akin to that like like parent child relationship and that's something that she had for sure written off like part of it's like oh well maybe I'm just gonna go through life not having you know close friends but they're still part of her that hoped for it always because that seems more attainable but obviously it's like your own parents treated you horribly and never really wanted you and felt you were a curse to them so that's that ship has sailed experiencing like familial parental relationship is never gonna happen and then jack's out here being like i'd come to think of you like an adopted daughter and it was just like <laughs> and the whole like something and then, that like you the had notes uh, your for fucking sure bag given as up well. on the notes yeah and he said that <laughs> and then she found the note it was also was like it solidified he wasn't just saying that like he wrote it down where others yeah. could see it like he he put it in writing so that was the one that definitely had the strongest pull to bring her back um but she also ironically everyone being so willing to be like if you don't want to come back that's fine everyone making it clear like we don't want to make you feel like you have to come back was also what made her want to come back because again having the choice and feeling like they also respected like her and that choice enough to make it and having the room to make that choice was very exciting for her and ironically while, while we you all were deafened i did say of the three the one that had the least appeal, all of them were still very touching and like like touched your heart to hear them. But the one that was like the least likely to be like, I'm going to pull you back to the plane of existence was Brooks. Uh, and it's just because, again, it, it, it felt very much like Brooks had accepted it the most. Brooks was going to be the one who would be the most okay if she didn't come back kind of thing. And it was very much like, if you need to go, go. We get it because your life has not been great. Um, and then Kess... Also, Kes, Kes being like, basically Kes admitting fault or Kes admitting like, I haven't been the greatest friend and I want to make that up to you. So also big because of course, it's only in the end to start to realize that our relationship is still a genuine formed friendship and like a, like only good intent, but was very one sided and could be very toxic at times and was very manipulative sometimes. So hearing that acknowledged and being like, if you come back, like, we'll fix that, uh, was also a big deal. So when Dutch asked, like, which of these would make you more want to come back? Like, which of these would affect the DC, basically? I said, Kess and Jax's would pull her towards coming back. Brooks wouldn't, like, push her away, but it wasn't enough to be like, I feel like I need to come back because of that kind of thing. Ego. <clears throat> and then the final question of the night for Duke. Is oh. Davian going to push for the group to follow Celeste's thread after this one? It's like when you go, when you all go back to Eldilon and it's like, okay, no. chapter closed. No. <laughs> he Fair wants enough. to go to the plane of fire. He wants to go to fire plane. Fair Tell Kasuth a piece of his mind. He You're wants like, chat. Hey. <laughs> Pragmatic. Selfish. <laughs> There you go. And uh, with that, I think... He will, uh, he will oh. pursue Celeste. Don't, don't get it wrong. Don't get it twisted. But, um, <laughs> we'll, say, we'll say going to space is tertiary at the moment. And uh, Fair enough. Elemental Plane of Fire is a little bit more pressing. Fair, Fair enough. Um, okay. With that said, I think uh, we've been waffling for almost an hour and 45 minutes now. So I think it's uh, a good time to say, hey, so let's call it there. What one of them? Um, is it? Okay. Um, Appreciate you all for watching. Appreciate the fucking bits and subs, guys. You fucking dildos. Bits and bubs. Really appreciate that. Uh, like I said, we'll everything, any any dildos. money that, that, that gets donated to us through that, like on this channel, will go towards uh, Tailspire tokens uh, or or new emotes or we've been yeah, talking like about this all forever. Of the, um, like all of the... All of the custom player, yeah. like 
models and stuff are paid for through. Yeah, uh, like... I also use it to pay my fucking yearly Gene Beyond sub smile. Uh, yeah, yeah every... <laughs> which is helpful. <laughs> and everything, like every time I feel like, oh, I need to buy a new subclass or a new book uh, because we're going to use stuff from that for our campaign on D&D Beyond. Is yeah. a point in the Matt Mercer one or was it Laura that bought that? No, oh, uh, that think... one I bought because it's not on D&D Beyond. No, it's a DM's so that right. one, I think. Yeah, I, I just bought yeah. that off DM's Guild, but that's fine. Uh... Laura will be reimbursed. Smile. <laughs> <I'll make some laughs> it, it, literally, it was literally... It was a dollar. Don't bother oh, okay. reimbursing. <laughs> <Damn. laughs> it was one dollar. Uh, one dollar. Well, I guess the budget can like after tonight. I guess I can. I can <laughs> PayPal you a dollar. I God. personally would rather we be saving up DS revenue again yeah. whenever we need more sources on D and D Beyond because you have content sharing on, so we can all use it. But also, mm -hmm. it would be really fucking cool if we ever got like a proper, like a proper intro, animated, like, intro, even like beats. a twenty second little intro thing just a little just just a little something like a moving video thing that we can play uh, with some uh, a oh, moving music, video thing moving I mean, thing. It's we, can, we can keep using the Daigon mini for tailspire for now because i still look like that i just am glowing and spectral as opposed to corporeal yeah. i don't think we need to make I a do new wonder mini. if you went on um hero forge if you could change like, it edit to it. be edit it ethereal it. and then still if we because we've already paid for it the digital file i don't know if you can just re-download it or whatever no yeah but, like, will it change the f i don't know yeah if, if we're trying out i guess we could recolor that see what it has oh, oh we, we do have to repay i mean it's, it was like, i feel like that's a waste of money yeah. you have five other things bucks. you want to use it's but that's five, five bucks we could put towards something Eigen, else. Like... Yeah. yeah we'll see we'll see we'll see we'll see um I mean, you know, five bucks isn't the end of the world, but uh, I no. do kind of low key want to. Oh, I need to send Ethan my stats now that we've done them. Now, now that we, now that we have a, a little more budget over because the last couple, like last month and this month, y'all have been fucking going crazy. I want to see if I can make some more shit in uh, Hero Forge for Tailspire when it comes to like big bad guys and shit. Make some custom tokens for them instead. Yeah. That sort of thing. I think that'd be really cool. Um. You know, for like boss fights and stuff, have like an actual fucking cool dude looking dude instead of like generic demon number three. You know what I mean? I don't know how they can, can you the do. NPCs can you do like monster actual. tokens or monster guys in Tail, or is it just player characters? Yeah, no, I think you can. Hero Forge. This would be really cool. <clears throat> Although my, it's probably gonna run like shit. So, but well, I'll look into it. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, thanks for watching, everybody. Thanks for all the fucking generosity. You guys are awesome. Um, we'll be back on Sunday, uh, which is, I, I think it's Sunday, Mo Mother's Sunday, Day in Sunday. the UK, but I think I think we're still playing because yeah. the majority of the... Yeah, we're we still playing. Hate, moms, hate their so. mothers. Um, yeah, this will be up on YouTube whenever Bell gets to it. And um, we'll catch you Sunday. Peace out, y'all. Have a good, have a good really night. Nice. Thanks for the questions. Thanks for the generosity. Yeah, thanks for all the thanks questions, for guys. Next time, to us when Laura raid. plays a ghost. On Dungeon Select, which is crazy. How often yeah. First do you time playing Whispering a ghost baby. Woods next, baby. Du -du -du -dum. Bom, bom, bom. Gone? Bom, bom, bom. Bom, bom, bom. Du -du 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 -dum. And now slowly, like, fade out. Just like. Bom, bom.